Hello and welcome, Dr. Tabor Smith here with the Spinal Hygiene Movement. And in this video, I want to share with you an article by Tapio Vitamin Medical Doctor uh, called Connective Tissue and Immobilization Key Factors in Musculoskeletal Degeneration. And in this article, uh, it's really going to impact your uh, patient care, as far as your corrective care, uh, your your wellness care, especially frequency of wellness care. In my opinion, um, most chiropractors um, they recommend way too low of a frequency of of wellness care visits. Um, you know, we really need to step that up. But uh, this will help you to understand it to kind of back up. Uh, what it is that you recommend in your office. So let me jump right in. With this article, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. In fact, I'll try to post a PDF copy of it below if you want to read the whole article. But I do want to share some key point takeaways. I will read a couple of the paragraphs, but then I'll kind of give you my feedback and my interpretation of it and why it's so impactful for patient results uh, and the recommendations that we give in our office. <clears throat> All right, so starting off in this uh, paragraph, I'm actually going to read this whole paragraph, and we'll talk specifically about that underlined in red, but periarticular connective tissue is one important part of the musculoskeletal system. Its unique ability to adapt to the shortest distance between its origin and insertion, however, produces harmful effects during immobilization. And you and I know in a chiropractic office we see fixation uh, you know, even uh, immobilization in some cases of joints because they're hurting, they're in pain, they don't want to move them. Um, <clears throat> all, and, and listen to this and, and, and lean in here, check this out. All situations that lead to immobilization can cause some degree of degenerative change in the musculoskeletal system. When immobilization, whatever its cause, cannot be avoided, every attempt should be made to minimize it, and to try to treat its harmful effects. There is some evidence that early mobilization, traction, and continuous passive motion overcome the harmful effects of immobilization. What he just said there was that basically there is some evidence that early adjustments and chiropractic therapies and spinal hygiene reg done regularly reduce the harmful effects of immobilization. That's that's what I heard when I just read that. And, it, and, and then he goes on and he says, animal experiments play an important role in the attainment of knowledge of immobilization and mobilization processes and health and disease. And uh, what, you know, kind of what they did to animals is not very kind, not very nice. They learned a lot from them. For example, a lot of the studies would uh, entail, you know, rabbits where they would cast the joint and they would immobilize the joint. And then in different intervals, they would dissect into those joints to be able to see what happened. And they would notice, you know, within a week or two that adhesions would start the process of arthritis already. And then if, if kept, you know, over time, those that arthritis got worse with time as they analyzed that in an animal model. Let me go on and, and read this paragraph here too, uh, so important. Much is known about cartilage and joint structures, but that knowledge has not been useful in everyday medical practice. This state of affairs is understandable because structural changes are end results after metabolic and functional disturbances, and the morphology does not reflect the acute situation. So an in interpretation of what I just said there, basically they're saying, look, the medical system's not really even, you know, having anything to do with this. They're not, they're not trying to even care about this right now because it's not the acute situation, and most people present in a medical uh, setting in acute uh, issues or problems that they're having. So it's up to us as chiropractors to get out of that just acute care and, and step back into some preventative care and some maintenance and wellness care. And that's really where I think chiropractic shines and where medicine's like, you know, we don't even want to have to deal with those cases. Anyway, it goes on to say, <clears throat> There is increasing interest, however, in developing sensitive methods for evaluating function, one thing that chiropractic is all about, right? Such interest has been supported by many animal experiments and also reflects the importance of soft tissues, capsules and ligaments, fascias and muscles in the pathogenesis of bone and joint disease. The objective of this presentation is to review briefly the results of some basic experimental studies on the subject. All right, no key takeaways right here all right 
increased fibrosis of periarticular tissues, cartilage proliferation at joint edges, atrophy in weight-bearing areas, and regional bony ebernation, sclerosis, and reabsorption can be found after two weeks of immobilization. Now, let me interpret this. Again, what, what they just said is increase in, in fibrosis of periarticular tissues means like a tightening and a growth and a thickening of the tissues in the joint. Cartilage proliferation at joint edges, aka bone spurs. Atrophy in weight bearing areas, so the joint is literally degenerating. And regional bony hibernation, bone spurs again, and calcifications. Sclerosis, you mean uh, calcif you know, calcium laying down in, in, in plates and, um, and on the uh, surfaces of bone. And then reabsorption can be found after how long? Two weeks. Only two weeks of immobilization, they are noticing those changes in a joint. That means I don't want to recommend wellness care for my patients that's, that means visits greater than two weeks apart. That means I want weekly or every other week type wellness visits in my office. I mean, I'm going to show you something in just a second where it says monthly down there at the bottom. But, you know, I'm saying weekly or, or you know, Every other week is a great rhythm maybe to be on in, in wellness care. In general, these changes are irreversible. So we don't even want them. We want people under care for life and then taking care of that between their chiropractic visits with spinal hygiene. And then it goes down there at the bottom. It says periodic immobilization. Oh, wait, let me actually read through this. Many of them have been labeled as diagnostic findings for specific joint diseases, even though they're actually the result of immobilization. In addition, periodic short-term immobilization has harmful joint effects that are cumulative. Pay attention here. Periodic, so not, some, not a joint that's just in a cast and not moving ever. They're talking periodic short inner, uh, immobilization, like sitting in front of a computer for long periods of time and not moving for eight hours a day. Kids, you know, during a lockdown that were on a computer and couldn't go to school and they didn't get recess, they sat there in front of a computer screen, right? That could be a periodic short-term immobilization, has short-term joint effects that are cumulative, so they add up. Periodic immobilization over more than 30 days leads to progressive it goes on to say osteoarthritis. So what I'm getting out of that is with wellness care, we're able to not only prevent flare-ups, but we're able to help patients maintain better health and reduce their risk for spinal degeneration. The range of motion after periodic immobilization depends more on the total immobilization time than on the duration of either immobilization or mobilization periods. Okay, so again, it's accumulation. It's accumulation. If you're sitting in front of a computer for eight hours a day, you know, one day of it or one week of it may not completely cause degeneration in your life. But people aren't doing it for one day or one week. They're doing it for years, years and years and years of immobilization. And they're saying that it, that total immobilization time adds up. That duration of that time adds up. Um, even an immobilization period of four days has a cumulative effect in producing osteoarthritis. And an interval of four weeks between immobilization periods does not prevent osteoarthritis, arthri, osteoarthritis from developing. So AKA, this is, what I, this is what I interpret this to mean. Look, the fixation that causes degeneration, the fixation in a joint, that phenomenon is time dependent, not only time dependent, how long that fixation stays in that joint, but it's also cumulative. So even if we fix it and it fixates again, like it's cumulative over time. Therefore, here's what we need. Everyone needs to be checked and adjusted regularly by a chiropractor in order to reduce their risk of spinal degeneration. And everyone needs to be doing a daily spinal hygiene exercise to maintain that motion and strength and alignment between each chiropractic visit. That's the only way to end up reducing our risk factors for you know, long-term spinal degeneration. And in this article, uh, uh, Tapio Vitamin, he actually shows this, this uh, uh, diagram here of what happens inside of a joint. So we get immobilization, right? And then those tissues adapt. We have adaptation of connective tissues because of the immobilization. It causes shortening and thickening, uh, uh, thickening of that capsular joint and tissues. And that increases tension inside the joint and inside the soft tissues. 
And then we see elevated compression against the articular weight-bearing areas, right? So what's, what's Wolf law, Wolf's Law says that bone will remodel into areas of, of increased stress. So we're causing, literally causing Wolf's Law right here with elevated compression against articular weight-bearing areas. Metabolic disturbances, so we're seeing inflammation, all of those biological processes occur and repair, and that causes degenerative processes to happen, which then causes pain. And what, what does pain do? Immobilizes more, causes more shortening and thickening of the capsular tissues, causes more elevated compression against the articular weight bearing areas, causes more degenerative process, causes more pain, causes more immobilization. And this cycle continues to go on and on. And no wonder somebody walks into your office and you put an x-ray up and they have nasty phase two, phase three degenerative arthritis. And you're going, that did not start yesterday. It may not have taken as long as you think it took, but it did not start yesterday. This is a process and a cycle that has to be broken. And can you imagine if everyone was under regular chiropractic care, regular chiropractic checkups, and they did their spinal hygiene exercises between their chiropractic visits, how we could prevent degenerative arthritis from happening inside many, many joints? Maybe not every prevention of everything look even in dentistry you could brush you could floss you could go to a dentist regularly and you probably still get a cavity occasionally that's part of the the decay process of teeth right but if you do brush and floss and go to a dentist regularly you can significantly reduce your risk factors for tooth decay and this is what we're saying here if you can go to a chiropractor regularly if you can implement daily spinal hygiene exercises that help maintain the motion that you're getting at the chiropractor then you're reducing your risk factors for spinal degeneration over time <clears throat> now the last two paragraphs I got to share this with you so good watch this uh, conversely a sudden increase okay listen to this a sudden increase in running load produces degenerative changes in surface structures of joints at least temporarily just temporarily so they put rabbits i think they might explain it in here they put rabbits on a treadmill uh, for long periods of time and they would look at those joints as well this phenomenon has been shown in rabbit knee joints by scanning electron microscopy after five day periods of treadmill running it has been impossible Listen to this, so crazy. It has been impossible, however, to produce osteoarthritic joint changes in prolonged running experiments, probably because of the adaptation phenomenon and possible limiting factors, for example, cardiovascular characteristics, which to some extent prevent overuse. Degenerative changes during immobilization can be partly inhibited by traction or continuous passive motion. All right, here's what this is saying. Sedentary lifestyle is much more likely to cause degeneration than overuse is. Now, I'm not saying overuse, and he's not saying overuse can never cause some arthritis to happen, but, but it's the immobilization that's so much more likely to cause degeneration in a joint than overuse. And so that's what we're saying. Corrective care used right after an injury can then also reduce your risk factors for degeneration because what happens right after an injury immobilization right so we need some movement and some change in through and through this uh, that's going on <clears throat> and the last thing here watch this pain often causes involuntary joint immobilization in patients and even interferes with attempts to overcome the effects of immobilization the ultimate result can be disuse of the musculoskeletal system and the possible beginning of a vicious cycle just like we covered in the one of the last slides that cycle certainly this hypothesis addresses only one possible mechanism for the development of osteoarthritis sure there are other mechanisms of development for osteoarthritis not denying that at all um, but this is absolutely one pain causes that immobilization or that lack of motion or that fixation in through a joint and it and it creates this cycle that continues and continues until that cycle is broken that's why the adjustment is so important uh, for preventing arthritis and degeneration it's so important for maintaining it as well breaking that cycle no matter what phase a patient is in and that's why spinal hygiene is so important to be implemented on a daily basis because you don't know when that immobilization process or that fixation is going to be introduced again to that person's life cycle so if they're doing something on a daily basis to uh, to really magnify um, 
movement and motion in those spinal joints and then they're visiting your office regularly for checkups and adjustments, we're giving our patients the best chance to live that long, healthy, pain-free life and to reduce their factors and their chances of developing degenerative disc disease. All right, so I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed the, that review of that article. Check out the link below to read the entire article and get access to that. And stay tuned. We'll be bringing you more information soon. Thanks so much. Talk to you later.